well, would you look at what I got? Brand new gears. I mean, technically, that one's the new one. This one's the 280 gear we took out of the Mustang. I can't even remember how long ago we've done that. But we, we replaced this gear with the 355s. And now we got this one. So, what is this one you might be asking? This is a 410 gear. Right there. Look at that. Going with the big boys now, right? 410 gears with a Lincoln locker. It's all welded up. It, the, the, the spider gears are welded up. It, both wheels will spin at the same time now. Uh, always. Regardless of what happens. So that's you know, there it is. Let me show... Yeah, yeah see? Look at that. It's, it's a new gear. Yeah, no, you probably don't want to mess with... This is dirty. Please, stop. Alright, check out this big beefy boy. Now, I have the old 280s up here so we can, you know, compare, right? Because this has the heavy-duty case on it. Uh, whereas that one obviously doesn't. And... Obviously, you can see it's got extra webbing, right, compared to the two. You got a little extra meat down here, along with a fill plug, which that one does not have. Also, the thickness, right? Don't know if you can tell. Oh, yeah, you can tell. This guy's a lot thicker here as well. And the gears themselves, see the 280, look at how wide that is. Compared to how wide that one is. A lot beefier gear in here. Four tens, like we said. Why are we going with a four ten gear? Well, we have the 355s, right? Which was a drastic improvement over the 280s. So why are we going with a four ten now? You, you know, what, what's the thought process he? Well, I mean, the answer is, you know... Uh, it's acceleration. Like that, that's, you know, changing out gears equals faster acceleration at the cost of top speed. You know, that's what the gears do. Because although we are in fact building a much more substantial power plant to book back into the car, we're still doing dealing with the 302 based small block forward. I mean, it, cubic inches is not on our side. The less cubic inches you have, the harder it is to make a substantial amount of torque, right? And torque is what makes that thing get up and go, right? It's not horsepower. It's torque that gets it off the line, right? And the best way to increase torque is to multiply it. Because that's all what gears do. It's just a torque multiplier, right? Takes your torque, multiplies it, and sends it through the axle. Just like ratchets, okay? 280 gears, 410 gears. Bigger gear, longer lever, longer lever, the more torque it can place on the axle, right? Here's your pinion, okay, way back here, and it is twisting this gear around, right, through the axle, twisting the axle, okay? Same thing as this ratchet. Tightening a bolt. 280 gears, you have a shorter lever, okay? So you do not have as much torque multiplication with the 280s as you do with the 410s. But you can move faster with the 280s top speed wise. Your top speed is higher with the 280s than it is with the 410s because as this rotates around its axis, right? That this is the axle right now, rotating, right, round and around. This part right here travels a shorter distance than the same part would on this longer ratchet. From here to here, the end of this ratchet moved further than the end of this ratchet did, because it's a tighter circumference, right? So because of that, your top overall top speed 
gets shortened when you have a longer lever. See what I'm saying? I think that I think I explained that. You know, okay. It's another way to you know try to explain it. What the heck is that? A, oh, okay. From from here, it looked like a fucking skull. From back here, yeah, you see the two eyes and the nose and the mouth there. Any hoozle. So so this part here spins at the same rate of speed constantly. Okay, let's just pretend that it does. This stays the exact same speed. But with a bigger gear, bigger gear, right, is rotating the center of the gear slower than this one moving the same speed. That one's rotating faster. See? Okay. All right. This one goes faster, even though I'm rotating it the same amount than this one does. This one goes slower. Same amount. See? That's why your top end speed lowers when you go to a bigger gear. Okay? So if you max out at six grand, you're you're at red line right now. Your red line here is gonna be slower than your red line here. Okay? Right, that's that's how that goes. Okay, I mean now this is a better illustration of exactly what's going on. As you notice, the ring gear doesn't actually change diameter that we just use the ratchets as a way to you know help better illustrate the principle behind what's going on the relation between i mean the tooth count basically how many teeth are meshing together between the ring gear and the pinion gear those two things combined will give you an overall gear ratio right so you take the number of teeth on the ring gear and divide it by the number of teeth on the pinion gear and it will give you your gear ratio right okay so that that's this is what's actually happening the ratchet demonstration was just to you know illustrate the point essentially all you have to know is bigger gear more acceleration less top speed Less gear, more top speed, less acceleration. All right, simple as that. So, why wouldn't you just go with the biggest gear you could get then, right? I mean, you want to accelerate as fast as you possibly can. What prevents people from just going to the biggest gear possible? A number of things. Cruising highway RPM is a big one. That's why these are called highway gears, by the way. Uh, the bigger the gear, the lower the top speed. Well, you know, that automatically means, if you think about it, for every mile per hour, the RPM required to get that mile per hour increases when you increase the gear size. Oh boy, how can I say that a little bit easier? Okay, so you have 6,000 RPM available to you. That's the red line of the engine, right? Let's say your top speed used to be 125 miles an hour with these gears, and it drops down to 103 miles per hour with these gears, right? Your top speed changed. But you still have 6,000 RPM. So that means for every RPM the mile per hour is more, right? I hope that makes sense to you. Essentially, cruising speed in the Mustang, when I had the 280 gears, was about 65 miles an hour at 23, 2500 RPM. With the 355s, however, my cruising speed all of a sudden turned into 65 miles per hour at 2900, 3000 RPM. And finally, with the 410s, my cruising speed is approximately going to be 65 miles an hour at 3,200, 3,300 RPM, as shown by this calculator right here. And just like that calculator showed, it's easy to look that up. You just put in your uh, gear ratio, your tire height, and what mile per hour you want to go. And it'll tell you what RPM you will be cruising at. So that's a big one.
But the biggest factor in selecting your gear ratio, if it's a street strip car, obviously, is on the track. You know, quarter mile, eighth mile, whatever track you're running, right? That's where deciding what gear ratio you go with is, you know, that it's, it's going to tell you exactly what gears you're going to want after some trial and error. Because if you go to the track and you are going down quarter mile and by the time you get to the end of the quarter mile you're still accelerating you're still climbing in rpm all the rpm you had available to you after the fact is lost you, you did not get to use that energy on the track where it mattered most during the race it, it, I mean, if you're crossing the finish line at 4,000 RPM and your engine doesn't redline until 6,500, you got, you know, 2,500 RPMs worth of acceleration that you could have been doing on the racetrack, but you wasted it because you didn't get there in time. Bigger gears will help with that. Bigger gears will increase the acceleration lower the overall top speed well you didn't even get to your top speed in the quarter mile anywhere close to it so you want to match your quarter mile time with your acceleration and your overall red line you want to be cresting your red line as you go over the finish line that way you use every ounce of energy you have now if you're going down track, you're about half track, three quarters of the track, and you are bouncing off the rev limiter because you ran out of RPM and you're just sitting there going, eh, you know, until the end of the track. That's acceleration that you could have been using. You maxed out your top speed before the end of the race, right? Lower your gear ratio, increase your top speed. That way you can keep accelerating to a higher mile per hour by the time the race is done, by the end of the track. See what I'm saying? That's really where gear ratio comes into play most often. Now in our case, I'm going to guess Redline is conservative 6,000 RPM. You know, around, in, around there. Probably more realistically 6,500. If I had a really good valve train, it could be seven grand or up. I mean, those Windsors, they rev. I mean, you can build them 8,000 RPM all day long. But the higher the RPM, the more faster all the valve train wears out, the faster your springs lose their spring pressure, and you got to change those out, whatever. 6,000, we're going to say, is about, you know, the safe red line. If we go to 6,500, then, you know, oh well, right? Well, let's put in the calculator. Our mile per, you know, we want to be at approximately 6,000 RPM by the time the race is done, right? What's our top speed with 410 gears, 28 inch tall tire at 6,000 RPM? Looks like it's 120 miles per hour. Do I think that we're gonna reach 120 miles per hour by the end of the track? Well, yeah, somewhere around in there, 103, 125, you know, somewhere around there. So, 410s is in the ballpark, you know, for at the end of the track. Now, once we get on the track, we'll actually know for sure, you know, whether we need more or less gear. But that's in the ballpark. So, there we go. I mean, we got the gearing about, you know, there. We, we're in the ballpark, right, to be at the end of the track. Our highway RPM is really not all that terrible. I mean... Yeah, 3,500 RPM cruising down the highway, I'm okay with that. That doesn't hurt the car at all. All we need now is a power plant to propel us, you know, in there. Because the gearing, you know, that all works out mathematically, whatever, right? The power plant is what's actually going to, like, do all the heavy lifting, right? I mean, you, you got a lot of power... Well, you know, you could probably accelerate up to maybe past 120 miles per hour by the end of the track, you know. You might change up the rear gear ratio a little bit. Uh, chances are more like probably 103, 110 miles an hour at the end of the track. So it leaves room on the table with the gearing that we have. Uh, 
yeah so that's that's what's new right that that's that's the update well i mean i guess besides the fact that i fixed our rear tire situation and we now have rims to mount our slicks to but that's different episode different video right you guys don't want to see what that is just yet i mean you know right Thank you.